What is the difference between wolf dogs and wild wolves? Why own wolf dogs? Why have captive wolves? This is what we're going to talk about today in this video. So what is a wolf dog? A wolf dog is a breed of dog with both wolf and dog DNA. They are bred with two wolf dog parents and it's not a wolf that was bred with a dog making it a hybrid. Wolf dogs have also been selectively bred for decades to temper down the wild instincts which makes them more compatible with humans. Wild wolves on the other hand choose their own mates based usually on natural selection. Captive wolves used for research and reintroduction are primarily chosen by humans for health and genetic diversity versus say compatibility to get along with humans. Although sometimes this is not the case with pure wolves bred for being ambassadors. So why would anyone keep wolf dogs? So why keep wolf dogs? Why own wolf dogs? Well, for one, they do well with the right people and live quality lives. Also, wolf dogs are usually the closest anyone will ever get to seeing a real wolf-like dog in person. Most people are somewhat fearful of wolves and even wolf dogs, so seeing one actually can pique a person's interest and may inspire a change of heart and mind when it comes to wolves in the wild as well as wolf dogs. The first thing anyone usually hears about a wolf is what the big bad wolf did in Little Red Riding Hood. Even though this is a fairy tale, it sits on the subconscious mind of many adults. This irrational fear is later fed by Hollywood movies and even outdoor reality shows that are anything but reality. If you want some more thorough information on wolf dogs, see my other wolf dog video, What Are Wolf Dogs? I didn't know wolves were being killed. Why is that? I thought they were protected. Very good question. Wolves were recently delisted in all of the lower 48 states thanks to political pressure. Wisconsin was forced to have a wolf hunt after they got sued by an out-of-state hunting organization. In just three days, over 20% of the state's population was wiped out as the hunt doubled the quota that was allowed and many pregnant females with pups were also killed because of the time of year. I grew up hunting in a northeast Louisiana hunting culture and I can tell you hunting ethics that used to be around have been flushed down the toilet. The state of Wisconsin proved that state agencies do fine with herbivore game species but certainly not predators, especially wolves. When I was young we had plenty of fox coyotes and bobcats that nobody ever hunted and we also had plenty of deer and other game. Our native red wolves were pretty much wiped out by the early part of the 20th century, but they certainly didn't wipe out any deer herds. Don't know how all the game flourished without the predator killing contest we have nowadays, but they did just fine. So what's all this about predator management? Hunters talk about over and over and over again. Studies redundantly show killing predators or wolves does very little for game species except in a few rare situations. Yet this doesn't put a dent in the mad dog hatred you see among many rural hunters today. They also have very little protection even in places where they are protected. If one is illegally shot, they are usually not caught and when they are, very little is done in the way of punitive consequences. Hunters who have no university level ecology classes under their belts whatsoever rage about how predators have to be managed despite the fact that prey populations drive predator populations, not the other way around. Plus, predators that prey on livestock have always been killed, so that's really not an argument either. <laughs> also, wolf killing gets very little national media attention from TV news, as the same, same old stories pack all the news channels. However, thanks to social media, that is changing somewhat. Some of the big media outlets have been covering the Wisconsin Wolf Massacre and the negative publicity has been raining down hard on the state. So people need to know what's going on now and how our predators and especially our wolves are doing. People need to see what their dogs looked like 20,000 years ago and they need to get involved.
So, what can we do? Generally speaking, wildlife advocates, ecology-minded and environmentalist-minded people are not showing up to wildlife agency meetings, commission meetings that is. It's just mainly made up of hunters and ranchers, farmers and other people in agriculture and they get what they want. Plus, you know, hunters contribute a lot of money to wildlife agencies and that's what they look at. Money talks, as they say. Yet, you know, courts have ruled that wildlife belongs to all the people, all the citizens, so the citizens really should have a big say in how their wildlife is managed and dealt with. But if the citizens don't show up, they don't get much say. People not only need to show up to wildlife agency meetings and get involved, they need to contact their local representatives and governors and tell them what they think. Donate to these NGOs, non-governmental organizations that are doing good things to protect our wildlife and our environment. Pick the good ones that are actually putting your money to use and doing good things. These are the ways we can not only save our wolves, but we can save our ecosystems and our environments as well. Just get involved. If you like this video and want to learn more about wolves, wolf dogs, and dogs, please hit the like button and subscribe.